Yes, this young man right here. Right there. Yeah, there you go. I have two questions. Okay. One, um, if Noah's Ark was made out of wood and dinosaurs were on it, wouldn't he have troubles with the dinosaurs getting out and attacking other animals? No, because God didn't allow animals to eat other animals until after Noah's Ark. Remember, animals have to obey God. They're, they're not going to defy God. And it says in Genesis chapter 9 that God said to Noah, he now makes a covenant with man that man no longer just has vegetables to eat, now they have animals to eat. And then it says in Genesis 9, and God made this same covenant with the animals. So in other words, God told the animals, from now on, you guys were allowed to eat each other. Before then, they weren't allowed to eat each other. So they wouldn't have, because they would have obeyed God. So no, they wouldn't have had to. Second question. Oh, that's right, two. Oh, yeah. Two for the look at Look at him, just, just take the sale. Oh, I got another question, pal. If dinosaurs are huge, does that mean that the ark was huge? <laughs> remember the, uh, remember what I told you about the defense attorney, where the jury is sitting there going, wow, I was convinced he was innocent or guilty until I knew about this and this and this and this. And this. I'm going to tell you something about dinosaurs most people don't even know. Okay? Do you know what the average, average size of dinosaurs were? Average size, about the size of a sheep. Three to five feet in length is all the bigger the average dinosaur was. That is it. That doesn't mean there were no dinosaurs that were really big. Don't misunderstand me. There were, but they were the minority. The actual fossil record itself confirms that the average dinosaur is only three to five feet in length. So just so you know, most of the dinosaurs getting on Noah's Ark, no problem. They weren't any bigger than sheep or dogs, okay? There were only a handful of dinosaurs that grew to really big sizes. So now you've got to ask, well, how does some giant 30-foot-long dinosaur get on Noah's Ark? Think of it this way, if we could, okay? God sent elephants onto Noah's Ark. Do you think that God would have sent a couple of full-grown, 12-foot-tall, five-ton pachyderms getting onto Noah's Ark, or do you think he would have sent a couple of little baby elephants? I'm thinking he would have been smart and sent a couple of baby elephants so that they're young enough to grow up and reproduce and repopulate the elephant population. Very same thing with the dinosaurs. Those dinosaurs that grew to big sizes, I think God would have been smart enough to send little baby dinosaurs of those to get on the ark. And then, quite frankly, here's what happens. Little baby dinosaur. I can see a cute little T-Rex. Looks like the Geico lizard. Ee, 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 ee. Getting on there. It's like, get on there. And then Noah says to his wife, by the way, a few months from now, when we're off the ark, we're not going to want to run into that guy. Okay? Just like that cute little lion cub, okay, we probably won't want to run into him either. All right? So some of these animals, especially after God gave them a new covenant where they could eat each other, and that means they, could, they became meat eaters, and that means they could also eat humans, okay? As soon as God changed that with the animals after the ark, which was smart instead of doing it before the ark, okay? After that time after the ark, then suddenly these creatures like lions, okay? Like T-Rexes, uh, like velociraptors, they suddenly became a lot more dangerous, obviously, okay? But during the ark, no. They would have been babies. Common sense tells me God would have done it that way. So, yes, ma'am. having to do with eating meat, do you think was going from being vegetarians to meat eaters, was that an adaptation or microevolution, or do you think God, like... No, I think God designed it that way. I think he, he totally designed like that. it that way. He, he had them be vegetarians and didn't have them doing meat eating at all until after the flood and after things start fresh again, and then from that point... Okay, I think he could have, at the time of the fall in the Garden of Eden when sin entered the world and death entered the world. I think that God could have, if he chose, he, he could have went ahead and allowed them to be meat eaters at that time, but I think that he knew that there would probably be a lot of carnage, and he probably knew uh, there's going to be a worldwide flood. I'm going to be saving the animals uh, in an ark, and I don't, I don't need them eating each other and eating Noah. Okay, So I, I think God's timing, he knew, I'm going to leave them vegetarians. He's going to limit the amount of destruction that they can do until a certain point. Some people are like, well, then why do the T-Rex have sharp teeth? And why do, you know, number one, 
vegetarians still very often have sharp teeth, okay? I mean, you look at, uh, uh, you, you look at for example, some uh, pandas or koalas or things like this. You, there's different types of animals that have serrated teeth that's very sharp that do nothing but eat bamboo, okay? And plus, a lot of trees and a lot of branches are very fibrous, and sharp serrated teeth are very beneficial in, in cutting through fibrous trees and vegetation. So there would have still been an advantage to sharp teeth for the T-Rexes, if you will, to go ahead and eat them. But they're already in place so that when they do become meat eaters, it's now easier for them to eat meat. So, okay? We could be fair to some folks on this side. Yes, they're back here in the back. Um, Bob. Duco. Um, I got one question. Do you believe in aliens... Do I be, believe in aliens? Yes. Like well, I, if, you, if you're talking about people coming over the border illegally, yes. No, like, um... If you're asking me if I believe in Belzadar from the Gamma Quadrant, no. Uh, I do not. 